The Bronchial Hygiene Modality that we will be instructing today is an incentive spirometer, also known as IS. First, for background information, IS is a sustained maximal inspiration maneuver based modality, meaning the patient has to be able to take a deep breath in and hold that breath. IS is designed to mimic a natural side mechanism. As of equipment, IS is generally categorized as either volume or flow oriented. Volume oriented devices measure and visually indicate the volume achieved, and flow oriented devices measure and visually indicate flow. The flow device is equated with volume by assessing the duration of inspiration or time. Here is a demonstration of how to use IS. Hello, Mrs. Jones? Yes. Hi, I'm Angel. I'm your respiratory therapist, and I'll be here to give you your IS treatment, okay? Let's see. Yep, you're supposed to have an incentive spirometry treatment. Can may I just check your ID bracelet, please? Okay. First thing I would like to do is check your pulse, if you don't mind. Okay. While that's going on, may I take a listen to your breath sounds, please? Able to sit up so we can listen in the back. Okay, take your phone. Okay, while you're sitting up in that position, I'm just going to raise you up a little bit more. You want to make sure your patient is sitting in an upright, semi, I'm sorry, phallus position. Okay. This off. Have you been coughing at all? Uh, not a lot. Okay. Non productive? Okay. Now, this is your incentive spirometry machine. First, you want to instruct your patient to exhale normally. Put the mouthpiece in your mouth and close your lips tightly around it. Do not block the mouthpiece with your tongue. Inhale slowly and deeply through the mouthpiece to raise the indicator. Try to make the indicator rise to rise up to the levels of the target pointer. When you cannot inhale any longer, remove the mouthpiece and hold your breath for at least three seconds. Exhale normally. You want to repeat these steps 10 to 12 times every hour when you are awake or as often as directed. Clean the mouthpiece with soap and water after each use. Do not dispose mouthpiece for longer than 24 hours. Keep a log of the highest level you are able to reach each time. This will help caregivers see if your lung function improves. Advantages of using IS are that it's a low cost piece of equipment that gets the job done and relatively simple to use once properly instructed. Now I'm going to explain a couple of reasons why it is used. The clinical goal of appropriately applied and sustained maximal inspiration in IS include optimizing lung inflation, optimizing cough mechanism, and as an early detection of acute pulmonary disease. Also in the presence of the following clinical indications should IS be used. Pulmonary atelectasis, conditions predisposing to atelectasis, for example, upper, air, upper abdominal surgery, thoracic surgery, or surgery in patients with COPD or smoking history that require general anesthesia, and in the presence of restrictive lung defect associated with paraplegic or dysfunctional use of the diaphragm in patients with neuromuscular disease. To add a few contradictions or that patients who are unconscious, unable to cooperate or confuse, also patients who cannot properly use IS devices after instruction or patients who are unable to generate adequate inspiration or a deep breath. Good job. Okay. I am going to have you, come on, would you mind trying to call for me? See if anything comes up. Okay. 
Further, I would like to add that proper breathing technique and positioning must be taught in conjunction with the use of the device. IS is ineffective without close supervision and proper instruction. The patient should continue to inhale as long as possible to, to achieve full inspiratory capacity. The initial inspiratory goal should be twice the patient's measured tidal volume, but this may have to be increased or decreased to find an appropriate initial goal. There are a couple hazards and complications with using IS. It can cause hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis, discomfort secondary to inadequate pain control, pulmonary barotrauma, hypoxemia with interruption of therapy, exacerbation of bronchospasm, and fatigue. Also, it can be inappropriate as sole treatment in a major lung collapse or consolidation.